back of the I have here today the Lenovo Lock 15 L O Q. So I assume this is pronounced lock. If you know it's a, a little bit different, please share in the comments below. But the question we want to ask in this video today is 8 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM still enough for all of your work, for your study, as well as gaming equipped with a 4050 6 gigabyte GPU in this particular laptop. We've been looking at a lot of very high-end laptops on this channel and they're very, very expensive, but they're very, very powerful, very, very well equipped, very, very feature rich. But the question we wanna ask is for the average consumer, can a budget oriented offering around the $1,200 Canadian range with only eight gigabytes of RAM and a 500 gig SSD and the base level RTX 4050 that still lets you DLSS and frame generation tech enough for gaming and all of your multi-purpose laptop needs. Budget devices are generally equipped with budget specs. However, Lenovo has seen has done a decent job here. We've got a Zen 4 Ryzen 7 7840HS8 core part on board for the CPU. We've only got, however, a single channel 8 gigabyte DDR5 module. Keep in mind that at least this is 5600 megahertz and it is upgradable. So you can easily pop off the bottom cover and throw in 16 or even a last 32 gigabytes of DDR5 at 5600 megahertz. We've got a 512 gig Gen 4 SSD a 1080p 144 hertz 350 nits ips display though that 45 percent ntsc only moves over to srgb at about 70 percent which is fairly low and very color poor we've got a 4050 6 gigabyte here with a 95 watts max tgp and being a budget device we've only got a 60 watt hour battery although usb type c charging is available on board at 100 watts and we also have 175 70 watt uh, slim tip lenovo charging adapter that's provided with the laptop Next, we'll take a quick peek at the ports on offer as we go around the device here. So let's begin with the front of the device. We'll work our way in a clockwise fashion. We'll go around to the left, to the back, and then over to the right. And finally, taking a look at the bottom of this device and the bottom panel. Looking at the front of this device, as I've just mentioned, there is a little bit of a lip to grab so we can open the laptop easily with one hand. But the consequence of that is, and of course, because with the stinge not being as stiff as it should be, the laptop doesn't quite open in this Form. You can see here that the lid is slightly closed, but it's very easy for it to become loose. I do not know if this over time will start to wear down the hinge. I assume it will be okay, but considering the price range and the budget oriented category of laptop we're looking at, it is something for you to keep in mind. Over to the left hand side, and as we can see here, that lid not quite closing correctly is also very, very visible as we've swapped over to the left hand side of this device. But alas, let's move on to what we have on this device. So on here, we've got a microphone combo jack with a headphone jack. We have a USB type C, and I believe this is, it is not Thunderbolt uh, because we have AMD GPU, or excuse me, APU in this device. So as we swap over to the left hand side of the device, we can see here that the lid not being able to fully close is also very much evident here. So this is something definitely to keep in mind as you carry and lug this around in your laptop, throw it on top of books, etc. You're going to need to make sure that you take care not to damage this hinge. In addition, we've got a microphone headphone combo jack and we have a USB type C port with alt display out. However, keep in mind, because this is an AMD APU, we do not have Thunderbolt 4 on this device. And we've got some really nice blue accented cooling vents here with a copper heat sink visible inside. And there is some pattern to the device, as you can maybe see here. As I swap over, it's actually nicely textured, so it looks kind of cool. A nice little detail that Lenovo has provided. Moving to the rear, we've got more venting. So we've got venting on the left and right side of the ports. This is a very typical pattern now for Lenovo for the last few years. Lenovo devices will have some ports on the back with heat vents on either side. So you have four ports for exhausting the hot air. Now, starting with the right here, we've got a USB or rather, sorry, a, a slim tip, as Lenovo call it, a slim tip 170 watt power adapter with this device. Considering it only has the 4050, you really don't need much more than that. We've got a full size HDMI 2.1 port, a gigabit, this is not 2.5, just one single gigabit ethernet port, but it is flipped upside down, which is a little bit of an annoyance because you usually have to clip, grab the clip in order to remove the cable. Right side up would have been preferable, but it's nice to see that it makes its uh, presence here on a budget offered offering. 
We've also got USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports. Well done on that. How can we have Lenovo with a Legion 9i, which is their most premium flagship offering and only includes uh, 3.2 Gen 1 ports at 5 gigabits per second, and yet we have a budget offering here with the latest 10 gigabit 3.2 Gen 2 ports. You know, it's a little bit baffling there, but it is what Lenovo has done. And over to the right hand side of the device, again, we see the blue accented copper heatsink. It's a nice little accent and nice little touch. It keeps it in sync with we had the blue uh, exhaust coloring that we have on the back. Nice little theme going, not too bad. And I don't think it's too gaudy of a color that you'd be out of place in an office environment. Other than that, on the right hand side of this device, we have just another singular USB 3.2 uh, Gen 1 port, I believe this one, because it doesn't have the 10 mark next to the USB indicator. And we have a eCam or e shutter switch for the webcam. This can also be activated by just sliding it over and it will disable the webcam on this device and popping it over will re-enable it. We would much prefer that on some of, as on some of their laptops, they have a slider above the webcam, which is a physical and a manual shut off for the camera for much, much better for privacy. We know electronics can fail and you can have you know, all kinds of errors happen. So that would have been preferable. Alas, it is nice to see that it does make a presence here. And finally, on the bottom of the de device here, we have plastic paneling all around. We have some rubberized feet that kind of go all along the way here. We have a little bit of a cutout and a recess in the center so we can get some nice airflow going there, intake. And we also have two rubberized feet toward the front of this device here. So it's nice to see that. And we have, as what that is, as is very typical with many, many laptops, two bottom and side firing speakers, one on each side of the device that fired to the bottom and out. And they are very poor quality to say the least. Even if you're playing a YouTube video, sitting just a few feet away with a fan running, you're unable to hear uh, the audio very well. You have to really focus in and tune in to really understand you know, what you're listening to. That said though, we can see there's two fans in this device here for cooling purposes and we see a few heat pipes being shared across. Looks like only maybe two heat pipes. Because this is a 4050 and a very budget oriented laptop, you will not be finding any vapor chambers, any element 31 or any uh, you know, conductor knot or what do you call it? Liquid metal here in this particular class of device. That said, we see some blue accenting here as well. Nice little touch to keep the theme going. You know, Lo Lenovo seems to do that very well. We've got blue accents in the speaker grills here as well. So nice to see that there's a consistent theme and a visual appeal. And flipping back to the top of this laptop again, I want to point out just a few nice things. This is not, a, it's kind of an embossed logo. It has a nice texture to it. It feels nicely done. It's out of the way. It's not too gaudy. We don't have, you know, extravagant colors here or some of like some of the MSI laptops. They just have a big dragon in the center. So this is a little bit low key, a little bit discreet. I really like this look. We have a Lenovo badge here off on the side and the hinge is recessed or uh, the hinge is you know, brought forward a little bit from the actual back of the device. We have ports, heat is exhausted here. So for the most part, when you have the device turned on, you will have, you know, some heat here at the very, very top of the of the device here, right below the hinge. But for the most part, you're not going to notice it because as your surface is around here, you'll be touching in this particular area. So we'll talk about heat a little bit later, but that's just uh, one thing I wanted to mention quickly here. And the hinge is sturdy enough. I don't think there's any issue with the hinge. It does hold even at a very low level without any issue, but there is a little bit of wobble. So that's just something to keep in mind. The other thing I wanted to point out here is that we have a nicely laid out keyboard we have a power button here that cycles different colors depending on what mode you're in and you can cycle those generally with Lenovo devices using function Q and you can see here that the on-screen display starts to update so quiet mode we've got auto and then it, it cycles back between the different particular modes right now I'm in auto and and only quiet mode because I'm on battery when you're on power and AC uh, AC plugged in then you have additional modes to go through performance balance quiet and auto and other than that, one more thing to say here is that this surface, it does not have any of the antimicrobial guards and something like we just saw in the ProArch Studio book. So this is going to catch a lot of fingerprints. I've been wiping it down consistently to keep it clean enough for the video. But keep in mind that you'll need to have a cloth handy in order to keep this laptop looking spick and span. Beginning with the top of the device here, we have a typical plastic shell. And considering that this is a very budget oriented device, don't expect to see any uh, forged carbon lids here or any premium materials such as even aluminum. This is very much a plastic lid. But that said, it's a one hand opener. 
You know, Lenovo seems to always do that very well. It opens nicely with one hand. It's well balanced. There's a battery at the front of this device and all of the electronics is towards the rear end of the device. So it's very well balanced, very easy one hand opener. And there is a little bit of a lip here, as we can see, which allows you to, you know, dig in with your thumb, easily grab, even with one finger, you can grab and open this. So from that perspective, well done. Now, it, there is a little bit of screen wobble when you open this. This is very common for many laptops today, but this is a compromise between having a very stiff hinge and having a one hand open laptop. If the hinge is too stiff, you cannot do this. But just something to keep in mind if that's bother that bothers you. Lenovo always does keyboards very well, and there is no exception here. We've got the traditional smiley keys, which were very reminiscent of Lenovo's devices from years past, and also modernized for their latest generation of devices. That said, we have a very standard Lenovo keyboard offering that you can recognize from pretty much any Lenovo device that is a 15 inches size or higher. They seem to be sharing this keyboard layout and this keyboard design amongst many, many models. And we can see here that we've got a QWERTY keyboard with an abbreviated or rather a, a squished numpad on the side just to say that they've given us a full-size keyboard. I do like, however, the full-size arrow keys when you're working or programming or editing. Uh, this is very, very handy for you know navigating numbers and cells and spreadsheets, etc. The keyboard also is a backlit keyboard. We've got two levels of backlight here, and that can be accessed using the function and spacebar key. So pressing it once will turn it on. Pressing it again will put it into a high mode. It's nice and visible. And then pressing it again will toggle the keyboard backlight off. We'll jump in now and do a quick one minute typing test and we'll boost the audio in post so you can listen to the actual typing experience from this laptop and let's jump right in. So to summarize the keyboard here on the Lock 15, it is basically a traditional smiley key Lenovo keyboard. It has decent key travel. It's not too stiff, not too soft. You can get easily get up to speed here and start typing quickly. Uh, the sound is pretty good. There is some level of tactile feedback. However, it could be better as I've seen on other Lenovo laptops. Now let's talk about the trackpad on this particular device. So this is a plastic or as Lenovo calls it, a Mylar Surface Multi-Touch Gesture Trackpad. And it seems to work pretty well. There are accidental misses here. And of course, it seems to be a little bit more common on this particular trackpad than I've seen on some of the other glass surface trackpads. That said though, Lenovo states that this does support precision drivers and I guess precision drivers are provided here. So for all intents and purposes, we can treat it as such. Uh, the clicking is a little bit noisy, noisier than I would like, but it seems to be you know, pretty even and consistent, perhaps a little stiffer towards the top where generally the hinge is located. But if you're down here in the lower thirds of this device, I don't think you'll have any issues. So for the most part, uh, acceptable trackpad, no real complaints. If you have accidental misses, just try to reposition your hands. And one more thing is using the keyboard shortcuts here. The trackpad can be disabled if you're in game and you don't want to have any accidental percent uh, touches where you end up being jumping out of the game or all tabbed out. And you can do that by enabling F10. Function F10 will basically show you this icon on the display and function F10 will then re-enable the touchpad. As the display is the most important part of any laptop because that's the part you look at and interact with on a daily basis to know how to control and work your computer, how to play games, enjoy your content, and also get your work done, the display on the Lock 15 is more of a basic offering. Since this one is equipped with a 4050, there are other configurations that can be had with a 4060 and those offer a better display. However, in its base configuration with the RTX 4050, we've got here a 1080p, 144 hertz 
300 nits, uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, 45% NTSC coverage display. And this is at 144 hertz, as I just mentioned. And because we have 45% NTSC, this does not even translate into 100% sRGB color gamut. That means if you're looking to have good visual experience with your games, you're going to see a little bit of a, you know, a, a difference between even a 100% sRGB budget offering that you may get for perhaps $100 more. You know, I've got a Dell uh, 4050 equipped laptop coming, a G15. Please stay tuned for that. We're, we're going to be doing some comparisons between the two to understand which 4050 laptop is a better offering. Is it a Lenovo this year or is Dell going to give you the better display? That said, this one does have Advanced Optimus on board and surprise Surprisingly enough, it is a G-Sync dis display. So thank you very much for, for including that Lenovo. We really appreciate that. No laptop, I think, at this, at this point should be coming without Advanced Optimus or G-Sync if it has an NVIDIA GPU or at least some sort of variable refresh rate tech. Another few things I want to point out about the display is if we look here at the display control panel, we do have an 8-bit panel, and this is very much common for lower end or 144 hertz displays uh, of years past. So it looks like we've got perhaps a better version of that slightly than we've had in previous years. But as far as coverage goes, we're still looking at 8-bit panels. We do not have a 10-bit true color panel, and we have SDR only support here. At 300 to 350 nits range, you're not going to be able to do any kind of SD or HDR because you cannot even get the VESA display uh, HDR 400 certification. So unplugging the power from the device, it does not automatically switch. In this case, you have to manually go into the device and switch it down to 72 hertz if you want to save a little bit of battery life. A little bit of an annoyance there. I don't know why this was missed. As most other laptops now, when you unplug, they throttle the display down to 60 hertz from whichever higher refresh rate they can run at. And now to say a few words about the actual gameplay experience and the usage of this display uh, on a daily basis. As you can see here, I'm playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey here at full, 80, full HD 1080p on medium settings. So it seems to be running pretty smoothly. Uh, there is from time to time some screen tearing, but I believe that maybe due to the low VRAM limit and the game actually uh, running into issues with that rather than actually uh, the display itself. As I mentioned, the display does have advanced Optimus support and as a result, you get usually pretty smooth gameplay. It does auto switch between the dedicated GPU and the onboard graphics of that AMD APU when you're not in the game using advanced Optimus. Uh, another thing I want to point out here, as I mentioned, because of that NTSC, only 45% uh, color gamut coverage, that means you're going to have a pretty poor visual experience in terms of the actual colors, the brightness, the vividness of this display. The brightness isn't so bad at around 350 nits, you know, and at maximum brightness, it's possible. You can certainly use this in an indoor environment. You're not going to win any awards with the display, nor going to get every, everybody gawking at the, the visuals that your display is producing. However, if you're on a budget and you want an all around device so you can carry to the to school, do your studies, you know, use it on the lap on on your lap uh, on the sofa and be able to do some gaming on at a desk. You have enough horsepower here to get that done. So overall, a usable experience, definitely enjoyable enough. However, how enjoyable it is, is will be you know up to your subjective opinion. Looking at the gaming benchmark, there's a trend that starts to form here. That is that for all games with tested at 1080p resolution, no ray tracing was used for this testing since the 4050 does not have enough VRAM nor the, graf nor the graphical horsepower to really do justice to, justice to ray tracing. That said, wherever available, DLSS was engaged and wherever available, frame generation was turned on. With those settings and the Lenovo Vantage software in performance mode, this laptop with the RTX 4050 and that 6 gigabytes of VRAM was able to deliver 60 or well above 60 FPS at a 1080p resolution in most games. What is troubling here though is the 1% lows and the minimum numbers in many of these games, which means you will experience stuttery or sometimes jittery gameplay. If you're looking for a smooth gaming experience where the 1% lows are well above or close to 60 FPS, you're going to be looking further up the stack, perhaps at a 4080 or a 4090 at a 1080p resolution to ensure smooth gameplay. As for storage, the Lock 15 comes with a Micron 500GB SSD of the PCIe 
NVMe Gen 4 variety. However, it is the slowest Gen 4 device that I've tested this year. The performance was pretty poor and I had a few issues where on boot the, de the boot device was not detected. And having to cycle through a couple of restarts a few times from a hibernate mode or if you put the lid you know, down and put the computer into sleep, it simply would not wake, causing me to have to do a forced hard shutdown and then a forced cold boot in order to get the device back up again. So I'm not sure if this is just a device that is on its way out and it needs to be simply replaced because it's defective or perhaps there's some issues with the device itself, but it is one of the slowest performers. And you can see here the stats, you know, 3,500, roughly 3,200 megabytes for read, 3,100 megabytes for write speed is very much akin to what we would have seen with the PCIe Gen 3 SSD. So despite being a Gen 4 SSD, I think this is a very poor showing from the log 15. I would highly recommend grabbing on sale uh, a drive that you can get one terabyte capacity at a minimum, perhaps even two terabytes considering the games are getting larger and larger these days and you want to have all of your other content and work as well to be really a usable device that lasts a few years. As for upgradability, Lenovo states that this has two SSD slots, so thank goodness for that, even in a budget offering. They would be keen of you to take note that there are two slots of different sizes. Only one slot is the traditional M.2 2280 variety. One of those slots is 2242, which is a smaller device, and finding upgrade device options for that particular type of slot can be limiting. So just keep that in mind as you look towards upgrading your device and choose the right one to expand the storage on this particular laptop. And also to mention here, there's no re card reader of any sort whatsoever, no mini SD card reader, no full-sized SD card reader, and that is to be expected pretty much of any budget device. Speaking of connectivity on the Lock 15, we have complements of a Realtek Gigabit Ethernet controller. Thank you very much for that, for that uh, Lenovo. We love to have wired connectivity wherever possible. We also have a MediaTek Wi-Fi 6 Wi-Fi adapter and Bluetooth 5.2 on board. Not the latest versions, but certainly enough to get the job done very nicely. As you can see here in this copy test, we're running at about 60 megabytes per second roughly, and the theoretical maximum for a gigabit connection would be about 90 to 100, 110 megabytes per second. So that said, we're about half of the speed of that, but considering this is a Wi-Fi copy test, we're not using ethernet. The ethernet would theoretically max out that 100 to 110 megabytes per second. We would love to have seen an in Intel Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.3 adapter, the latest version, the AX211, but alas, there's enough connectivity and speed here that I don't think you'll, be have, any, you'll have any complaints about the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth connectivity of this Lock 15. This is a test of the built-in 1080p 30fps full HD webcam in the Lock 15 from Lenovo. Also included is dual array microphone, so you should have a little bit of noise isolation from your ambient environment. Let me know what you think of the picture quality and the audio quality from the built-in components in this laptop in the comments below. Lenovo's been doing a pretty great job lately with batteries and also with charging on their laptops. This laptop is equipped with a 60 watt hour battery and all of the Lenovo laptops in 2023 are supporting some sort of rapid charge. This one here supports rapid charge 80% in one hour. Not too bad for a budget oriented device. The battery life, however, is about six and a half hours to nine and a half hours in their officially stated benchmarks here. However, I've seen about five to maybe five and a half hours repeatedly. So your mileage may vary there. Included is a 170 watt slim tip adapter, which is very common for Lenovo and also included thankfully is via the usb type c port is charging and power delivery using a usb c type power adapter if you're in a pinch you can power this up with 140 watts it won't be enough for gaming but it should be enough to get you through your work day or if you just need to get to college or to a class and travel a little bit lighter you can use a 140 watt or even a 100 watt usb type c power delivery adapter to charge and power this device I don't generally include a speaker section in my reviews, generally because most laptop speakers are pretty awful and barely enough volume to be able to use in a loud or a somewhat uh, open environment. That said, if you want good audio from laptops, you need to be equipped with a good set of headphones, whether they're wired or wireless with Bluetooth. But in this particular case, I felt compelled to make a comment here because of all the laptops I've tested this year, the Lenovo Lock 15 has the worst speakers of the bunch. The volume is not loud enough, even for listening two or three feet away from it uh, at max volume, if there's any level of ambient noise available uh, around in the environment. 
and to, to say the least despite being two watts by two speakers which is pretty typical on many many laptop arrangements and lenovo stating that this has a real tech ac 3287 codec which is fairly decent and being tuned by Nahimic Gaming Audio with the software you see on screen here, the overall performance from the speakers in this device was particularly poor. As we look at some benchmarks here on the CPU, it's important to note that this is an eight core, 16 thread part, and this is in, it's higher down, it's lower down the hierarchy. It's a 35 watt part, which is more budget oriented in terms of power usage. So it does not compete with the Intel HX series. Rather, it's more so in line with the Intel H series. So the Intel i7 uh, 13900H, for example. And we'll be looking at a follow-up video later on that compares AMD versus Intel CPUs as we head into 2024 to recommend some buying decisions for this 2023 holiday season. But as you can see, it holds up very respectively well. And we're really surprised when it comes to the battery life on this CPU. Looking at the gaming benchmark, there's a trend that starts to form here. That is that for all games with tested at 1080p resolution, no ray tracing was used for this testing since the 4050 does not have enough VRAM nor the, graf nor the graphical horsepower to really do justice to, justice to ray tracing. That said, wherever available, DLSS was engaged and wherever available, frame generation was turned on. With those settings and the Lenovo Vantage software in performance mode, this laptop with the RTX 4050 and that 6GB of VRAM was able to deliver 60 or well above 60 FPS at a 1080p resolution in most games. What is troubling here though is the 1% lows and the minimum numbers in many of these games, which means you will experience stuttery or sometimes jittery gameplay. If you're looking for a smooth gaming experience where the 1% lows are well above or close to 60 FPS, you're going to be looking further up the stack, perhaps at a 4080 or a 4090 at a 1080p resolution to ensure smooth gameplay. All right, conclusion time. So we set out in this video to answer the question whether 8 gigabytes with a budget oriented device like this could actually play AAA games. And the answer is a resounding yes. Now, if we look at here, this is a Assassin's Creed Mirage, the latest entry in the Assassin's Creed series. And I've got this running at 1080p resolution with the LSS set to quality settings. And as you can see here, we're getting in the mid 80s, 70s to mid 80s frames per second, which is very respectable frame rates for this type of game. That said, there are a few caveats though. The screen on this, this, uh, on this laptop is not as good as I would have expected, even on a budget offering today, having only 70% sRGB coverage is, is pretty poor. So Lenovo, I would have liked to see a 100% sRGB coverage screen, and I would really have had no complaints about this. The eight gigabytes of single channel RAM, it's not a deal breaker as there is dim slots in this device. So you can basically at some point later down the road when you need that additional memory, or let's say if you're doing math or AutoCAD or some sort of SolidWorks uh, workflow, you can easily take off the bottom panel, get yourself a budget oriented 32 gigabyte kit, throw that into this device and you'll be laughing all the way to the bank. In addition, uh, the overall packet is very good. We've got the Lenovo Smiley Keys keyboard that they're very well known for. The battery life, however, is not so good. The speakers are pretty poor. So there are a few compromises that Lenovo has made. But overall, considering the value that we're getting from this device for the, for the budget that we're getting it, keep in mind that Lenovo constantly runs sales and you can easily have this device for well below the actual MSRP. I picked this up at uh, $1,099, so $1,100 Canadian. Now keep in mind, Best Buy will have sales, Lenovo will have sales on their website. If you keep checking either of those, you should be able to catch a steal moment and pick it up, pick up this device. Even with that price, I can spend $100 on some really good RAM and an SSD upgrade from that 500 gig SSD up to maybe one or even a two terabyte, considering the holiday season right around the corner, and you'll have an excellent student and all around laptop to last you for a few years. So that's all I have to say about the Lock 15. If you have questions or if you'd like to ask particular things, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, please share my content across your social media channels to help grow this particular channel. Please like, share, and get subscribed. And please don't forget to ring the notification bell so that we can make sure that everybody's notified as new content is released onto this channel. And thanks very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.